Haribo He would wake up everyone Rise and rejoice to the name Haribo Haribo Krishna Gurari Das Krishna All glories to you Sri Gurari Das All glories to Prabhupada and all glories to Saraswati, to Babaji, to Takur, to Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya, Radharani, Krishna. I will read from um, um, Adilila, chapter 16, um, verse 1. Jaya Jaya Sri Setanya, Jaya Nityananda, Jaya Sri Aitveta Chandra, Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda. I worship Lord Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu, whose nectarian mercy flows like a great river inundating the entire universe, just as a river flows downstream, Lord Satanya especially extends himself to the fallen. All glories to Lord Satanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Chandra, and all glories to all the devotees of the Lord. Long life, Lord Setanya Mahaprabhu, and his Kaisora age, both the goddess of fortune and the goddess of learning worshipped him. The goddess of learning, Saraswati, worshipped him in his victory over the scholar who had conquered all the world. And the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi, worshipped him at home, since he is therefore the husband or lord, or both goddesses, I offer my obeisances to him. At the age of eleven, Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu began to teach students. This marks the beginning of his Kaisora age. As soon as the Lord became a teacher, many, many students came to him, every one of them astonished to hear his mode of explanation. The Lord defeated all kinds of scholars in discourses about all the scriptures. Yet, because of his gentle behavior, none of them were unhappy. The Lord, as a teacher, performed various kinds of pranks in his sporting pastimes in the water of the Ganges. After some days, the Lord went to East Bengal, and wherever he went, to, he introduced the Sankirtan movement. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Stuck with wonder by the influence of Lord Sitanya Mahaprabhu, intellectual prowess, many hundreds of students came to the Lord and began studying under his direction. In East Bengal, there was a Brahmana named Tapana Mishra, who could not ascertain the objective of life and how to attain it. If one becomes a bookworm, reading many books and scriptures and hearing many commentaries and the instructions of many men, this will produce doubt within his heart. One cannot in this way ascertain the real goal of life. Tapana Mishra, being thus bewildered, was directed by a Brahmana in a dream to go to Nimai Pandita. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because he is the Lord, the Brahmana told him, Undoubtedly, I can give you proper direction. After seeing the dream, Tapana Mishra came to the shelter of Lord Setanya's lotus feet, and he described all the details of the dream to the Lord. The Lord, being satisfied, instructed him about the object of life and the process for attaining it. He instructed him that the basic principle of success is to chant the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Tapana Mishra desired to live with the Lord in Navadvip, but the Lord asked him to go to Varanasi. The Lord assured Tapana Mishra that they would meet again in Varanasi. Receiving this order, Tapana Mishra went there. I cannot understand the inconceivable pastimes of Lord Setanya Mahaprabhu, for although Tapana Mishra wanted to live with him in Navadvip. The Lord advised him to go to Varanasi. In this way, Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu contributed the greatest benefit to the people of East Bengal by initiating them into Harinam, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, and making them learn scores by educating him. Because the Lord was engaged in various ways in preaching world in East Bengal, his wife Lakshmi Devi was very unhappy at home in separation from her husband. The snake of separation bit Lakshmi Devi and its poison caused her death. Till she passed to the next world she went back home, back to Godhead. Lord Setanya knew about the disappearance of Lakshmi Devi because he is the super soul himself. Thus he returned home to solace his mother, Sachi Devi, who was greedily unhappy about the death of her daughter-in-law. When the Lord returned home, bringing with him great wealth and many followers, he spoke to Sachi Devi about transcendental knowledge to relieve her of the grief she was suffering. After coming back from the East Bengal, Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu again began educating others. By the strength of his education, he conquered everyone, and thus he was greatly proud. Then Lord Setanya married Vishnu Priya, the goddess of fortune, and thereafter he conquered a champion of learning named Kesava Kashmiri. Vrindavan Dasa Thakura has previously elaborately described this. That which is clear need not to be scrutinized for good qualities and faults. Offering my obeisances to Srila Vrindavan Dasa Thakura, I shall try to describe that portion of the Lord's analysis which, when he heard it, made the Digvya feel himself condemned. Once on a full moonlight, once on a full moonlight night, the Lord was sitting on a bank of the Ganges with his many disciples and discussing literary topics. Coincidentally, Kesava Kashmira Pandita came there. While offering his prayers to Mother Ganges, he met Satanya Mahaprabhu. 
The Lord received him with adoration, but because Kesava Kashmira was very proud, he talked to the Lord very inconsiderately. I understand that you are a teacher of grammar, he said, and that your na name is Nimai Pandita. People speak very highly of your teaching of beginner's grammars. I understand that you teach Kalapa Vyakarana. I have heard that your students are very expert in the word jungleri of this grammar. The Lord said, yes, I am known as a teacher of grammar, but factually, I cannot impress my students with grammatic, grammatical knowledge, nor can they understand me very well. My dear sir, where is you are a very learned scholar in all sorts of scriptures and are very much experienced in composing poetry. I am only a boy, a new student and nothing more. Therefore, I desire to hear your skill in composing poetry. We could hear this if you would mercifully describe the glory of Mother Ganges. When the Brahmana Kesava Kashmiri heard this, he became still more puffed up. And within one hour, he composed 100 verses describing Mother Ganges. The Lord praised him, saying, Sir, there is no greater poet than you in the entire world. Your poetry is so difficult that no one can understand it but you and Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning. But if you explain the meaning of one verse, we can all hear it from your own mouth and just be very happy. The Divyayi Kesava Kashmiri inquired which verse he wanted explained. The Lord then recited one of the 100 verses Kesava Kashmiri had composed. The greatness of Mother Ganges always brilliantly exists. She is the most fortunate because she emanated from the lotus feet of Sri Vishnu, the personality of Godhead. She is a second goddess of fortune, and therefore she is always worshipped both by demigods and by humanity. Endowed with all wonderful qualities, she flourishes on the head of Lord Shiva. When well, Lord Sitanya Mahaprabhu asked him to explain the meaning of this verse, the champion, very much astonished, inquired from him as follows. I've recited all the verses, like the blowing wind. How could you completely learn by heart even one among those verses? The Lord replied, By the grace of the Lord, someone may become a great poet, and similarly, by his grace, someone else may become a great Sruti Dara who can memorize anything immediately. Satisfied by the statement of Lord Setanya Mahaprabhu, the Brahman explains the quoted verse. Then the Lord said, Now kindly explain the special qualities and faults in the verse. The Brahmana replied, There is not a tangle of fault in that verse. Rather, it has the good qualities of similis an alliteration. The Lord said, My dear sir, I may say something to you. If you will not become angry, 
Can you explain the faults in this verse? There is no doubt that your poetry is full of ingenuity and certainly it has satisfied the Supreme Lord. Yet, if we scrutinizingly consider it, we can find both good qualities and faults. The Lord concluded, Now, therefore, let us carefully scrutinize this verse. The poet replied, Yes, the verse you have recited is perfectly correct. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You are an ordinary student of grammar. What do you know about literary embellishments? You cannot re review this poetry because you do not know anything about it. Taking a humble position, Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu said, Because I am not on your level, I have asked you to teach me by explaining the faults and good qualities in your poetry. Certainly, I have not studied the art of literary embellishments, but I have heard about it from higher circles, and thus I can review this verse and find in it many faults and many good qualities. The poet said, All right, let me see what good qualities and faults you have found. The Lord replied, Let me speak and please hear me without becoming angry. My dear sir, in this verse there are five faults and five literary ornaments. I shall state them one after another. Kindly hear me and then give your judgment. In this verse, the fault of Avimstra, oh la 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 la, Avimrista Viteyamsa occurs twice, and the faults of Virudamati, Bhagnakrama, and Punarati occur once each. The glorification of the Kenges is the principal unknown subject matter in this verse and the known subject matter is indicated by the word idam which has been placed after the unknown because you have placed the known subject at the end and that which is unknown at the beginning the composition is false and the meaning of the words has become doubtful. Without first mentioning what is known, one should not introduce the unknown, for that which has no solid basis can never be established anywhere. In the word Divitya Sri Lakshmi, the quality of being a second Lakshmi is the unknown. In making this compound word, the meaning became secondary and the originally intended meaning was lost. Because the word Dvitya is the unknown in its combination in this compound word the intended meaning is equality with Lakshmi is lost. Not only is there the fault of Imstra Videyamsa but there is also another fault which I shall point out to you. Kindly hear me with great attention. Here is another great fault. 
You have arranged the world. Bhavani Bar Bartri to your great satisfaction. Sorry if the words are not okay. Um I don't know um Sanskrit. I can not read Sanskrit. To your great satisfaction. But this betrays the fault of contradiction. The word Bhavani means the wife of Lord Shiva. But when we mention her husband, one might conclude that she has an other husband. It is contradictory to hear that Lord Shiva's wife has another husband. The use of such words in literature creates the fault called Virudamati. Great. If someone says, place this charity in the hand of the husband, of the wife of the Brahman, when we hear these contradictory words, we immediately understand that the Brahmana's wife has another husband. The statement by the word Vibhavati is complete, qualifying it with the adjective Abhutaguna creates the fault of redundancy. There is extraordinary alliteration in three lines of the verse, but in one line there is no such alliteration. This is a fault of deviation. Although there are five literary ornaments decorating this verse, the entire verse has been spoiled by these five most faulty presentations. If there are the literary ornaments in this verse, but even one faulty expression, the entire verse is nullified. One's beautiful body may be decorated with jewels, but one spot of white leprosy makes the entire body abominable. Abominable. As one's body, although well decorated with ornaments, is made unfortunate by even one spot of white leprosy, so an entire poem is made useless by a fault, despite alliteration, similes and metaphors. Now here the description of the five literary embellishments. There are two ornaments of sound and three ornaments of meaning. There is a sound ornament of alliteration in three lines and in the combination of the words Sri and Lakshmi, there is the ornament of a tinge of redundancy. In the arrangement of the first line, the letter Ta occurs five times. And the arrangements of the third line repeats the letter Ra five times. In the fourth uh, line, the letter Ba occurs four times. This arrangement of alliteration is a pleasing ornamental use of sounds. All those the words Sri and Lakshmi convey the same meaning and are therefore almost redundant, they are nevertheless non-redundant. Describing Lakshmi as possessed of Sri offers a difference in meaning with a tinge of repetition. This is the second ornamental use of words. The use of the words Lakshmi Eva, like Lakshmi, manifests the ornament of meaning called Upana. There is also the further ornament of meaning called Pirudabhasa, or the contradictory indication. Everyone knows that lotus flowers grow in the water of the Ganges. But to say that the Ganges takes birth from the lotus flower seems 
extremely contradictory. The existence of Mother Ganges begins from the lotus feet of the Lord. Although this statement that water comes from the lotus flower is a contradiction in connection with Lord Vishnu, it is a great wonder. In this birth of the Ganges, by the inconceivable potency of the Lord, there is no contradiction, although it appears contradictory. Everyone knows that lotus flowers grow in the water, but water never grows from a lotus. All such contradictions, however, are wonderfully possible in Krishna. The great river Ganges has grown from his lotus feet. The real glory of Mother Ganges is that she has grown from the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. Such a hypothesis is another ornament called Anumana. I have simply discussed the five gruff folds and five literary embellishments of this verse. But if we consider it in fine detail, we will find unlimited faults. You have achieved poetic imagination and ingenuity by the grace of your worshipful demigod, but poetry not well reviewed is certainly subject to criticism. Poetic skill used with due consideration is very pure. And with metaphors and analogies, it is dazzling. After hearing the explanation of Lord Zetanya Mahaprabhu, the champion poet was struck with wonder. His cleverness stunned. He could not say anything. He wanted to say something, but no reply would come from his mouth. He then began to consider this puzzle within his mind. This mere boy has blocked my intelligence. I can therefore understand that Mother Sarasvati has become angry with me. The wonderful explanation the boy has given could not have been possible for a human being. Therefore, Mother Sarasati must have spoken personally through his mouth. Thinking thus, the Pandit said, My dear Nimai Pandita, please hear me. Hearing your explanation, I am simply struck with wonder. I am surprised. You are not a literary student and you do not have long experience in studying the Sastras. How have you been able to explain all these critical points? Hearing this and understanding the Bandita's heart, Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu replied in a humorous way, My dear sir, I do not know what is good composition, and what is bad, but whatever I have spoken must be understood to have been spoken by Mother Sarasvati. When he heard this judgment from Lord Setanya Mahaprabhu, the Pandita sorrowfully wondered why Mother Sarasvati wanted to defeat him through a small boy. I shall offer prayers and meditation to the goddess of learning, the champion concluded, and I ask her why she has insulted me so greatly through this boy. Sarasvati has in fact induced the champion to compose his verse in an impure way. Furthermore, when it was discussed, she covered his intelligence. And thus the Lord's intelligence was triumphant.
when the poetic champion was thus defeated, all the Lord's disciples sitting there began to laugh lightly. But Lord Sitaya Mahaprabhu asked them not to do so, and he addressed the poet as follows. You are the most learned scholar and the topmost of all great poets, for otherwise how could such fine poetry come from your mouth? Your poet's skill is like the constant flow of the water of the Ganges. I find no one in the world who can complete with you, even in the poetic composition of such great poets as Bhava Bhuti, Jayadeva and Kalidasa, there are many examples of fault. Such mistakes should be considered negligible, negligent, negligible. One should see only how such poets have displayed their poetic power. I am not even fit to be your disciple, Therefore, kindly do not take seriously whatever childish impotence I have shown. Please go back home, and tomorrow we may meet again, so that I may hear discourses at the sastras from your mouth. In that this way, both the poets and Sitanya Mahaprabhu went back to their homes, and at night the poet worshipped Mother Sarasvati. In a dream, the goddess informed me of the Lord's position, and the poetic champion could understand that Lord Sitaya Mahaprabhu is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. The next morning, the poet came to Lord Sitaya and surrendered unto his lotus feet. The Lord bestowed him his mercy upon him and cut off all his bondage to material attachment. The poetic champion was certain, certainly most fortunate. His life was successful by dint of his fast learning and erudite scholarship, and thus he attained the shelter of Lord Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Sri Ravrindavan Dasa Thakura has described all these innocent incidents elaborately. I have only presented the specific incident he has not described. The nectarian drops of Sri Setanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes can satisfy the senses of everyone who hears them. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunata, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Dasi, Narat Sri Setanya Charitamrita, following in their footsteps. Hare Krishna. <laughs>